greatest is gone. Mm-hmm. Yep. That'll be good. Oh, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the Prime 4 Podcast. My name is Ross. Chris. Bryce. Oh, I forget. I'm the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> it's this way. It's in order. Alex is not here today because he could not... He could not take the passing of Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Nah, he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Party too hard for the birthday. Yep. That's yep. dope. Well, happy belated birthday, Alex. Mm. Happy Definitely. birthday, fuckboy. Fuckboy. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kobe Bryant passed away last week. Yeah, rest in peace to Hel- everyone that was helicopter on Helicopter crash. Helicopter, yeah. Yep. I didn't believe that shit right away, like... Most people didn't. Yeah, it was like, Kobe Bryant dies in a helicopter. It was like, almost when they said The Rock died. And I'm like, The Rock didn't fucking die, did he? Remember when they said Jeff Goldblum searched? died when he was really in Australia or something? The yeah. One time. <laughs> it's like, yo. And then it just got, it went from surreal to real. And it's like, mm-hmm. fucking crazy. The tributes are crazy. I mean, I applaud a lot of the... Um, like Nike, I, I'm not sure about StockX or whatever, but a lot of people are pulling his merchandise so mm-hmm. they don't profit off his death. But I think that'll be all in vain because the second that they go back up, they're going to, yep. you know. Is that the article you were talking about? I just want to say, uh, rest in peace, Kobe. Yeah. His daughter was also on the helicopter that yeah. passed, mm-hmm. as well as, I believe, Mm, seven other people, yep. I think, yeah. that were on the helicopter. Mm-hmm. That was including the pilot, yep. Yep, and they all uh, they all perished in that uh, helicopter crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very unfortunate, unexpected, of course, sudden. Yeah. And even, you know, even though I'm a Jordan guy, like Kobe, you got to give him the respect that he deserves. And sure. he was one of the greatest, is one of the greatest, mm-hmm. and he's gone now. Um, I, I think mean, he, would, he was retired, so, yeah. and but still, it's he held, he held a lot of records. You know, he he played the game just as good as anybody else. Oh yeah, I honestly think go. he would be calling us soft for being sad right now, though. Like that's just how he was. Is just to like in your face, still funny, still smiling, still laughing. You know, and it's like. It's it's even more harder. It's even harder to grasp like that he's not here anymore. And I mean, I don't even follow. I don't even follow sports that closely. And it's just like Kobe Bryant still had quite a presence. So I just I just remember like before uh, the helicopter crash. Like I think there was something in the news about him and LeBron. Yeah, LeBron. And LeBron was... just beat one of his records or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. And He's Kobe, like, like yeah. he congratulated him or talked to him or something. Yeah, he passed then, him on the points list or whatever, for points scored or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and then he, uh, like, the next morning, I think, was the helicopter crash or something, maybe? Yeah. I but, so, the, yeah. oh, that's just sudden and shitty for LeBron, like, meet an idol, and then it's like, oh, well, fuck. Yeah. I heard he got a tattoo already. He got a tattoo already. He came out in some uh, Kobe's that are, like, never before seen Kobe Bryant shoes mm-hmm. that are, like, a collab between Nike uh, Kobe Bryant and the brand undefeated as well and uh, you know it's it's a lot of people with R.I.P. Kobe on their shoes or wearing their Kobe Bryants to play in and you know just kind of Kobe's. <laughs> Kobe's. right a lot of a lot of people also I guess we're getting a petition together to have uh, the all-star game one team number B8 the other B24 but it turns out that they used uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the number is now but one team will uh, wear his daughter's number, and the other team will uh-huh. wear the 24, so. Yeah, I heard they were changing some stuff for tribute purposes or whatever. Yeah. I went to a Timberwolves game, actually, this week, and they had a, a Kobe Bryant uh, tribute, and it was part of, you know, an animation, and it's just, like, this little kid wanting to play basketball, growing up to be Kobe Bryant, mm. you know, and it's, like, it just kind of hits hard. Like, my, my son's or even sad about Kobe's past. And I'm like, do you really know, though? But Oh, God. I can't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, You're gatekeeping their sadness. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying they can't be sad, but I'm just saying, like, it's, it's, it's crazy that my young children still feel it. And that's, like, mm-hmm. that's, that says the most to me about who Kobe Bryant was. Yep. Yeah, it, make, it, make, it makes you understand that you like probably take for granted the people who are still alive, that like Michael Jordan and Bill Russell and some of the 
even older people. The greats, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. And it's like, oh, there'll always be a phone call away until they're not, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, a lot, yep. not a lot of them have passed away. I mean, that's true. Magic. Mm-hmm. He's still he's there. Been, he's <laughs> still holding on, for Christ's sake. <laughs> he's, he's, I don't even isn't know. Isn't he clear how. now? I think he's clear. I think they said something of that nature. Yeah, that's just, it's mind-blowing. But it's like, it's still young. So it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it's like all those, those greats are still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like classic rock where it's yeah. like, oh, it's been the fifties. So like, but like they're starting to kick off steadily, yeah. like that kind of thing. It's like, oh, this was like big in the seventies, and they, they're, you know, for sure. And then I mean, speaking of uh, memoriam. And, you know, just mentioning people, the Grammys definitely had something going on. I thought I saw somebody post an article about that in the group, about them Uh, leaving people out of the... Yeah, apparently they do that, like, it seems the last few years they've been messing up with that, like, leaving out people. Like, I know last year, I think they left out, uh, was it Vinnie Paul or whatever, the, from, uh, Pantera or whatever. Oh, really? Yep, and stuff like that. And a lot of times it's like rock artists and stuff like that they leave out. It, yeah. I mean, the Grammys always seem more hip hop and shit lately, mm-hmm. but it's a, to the point where it's like if it's not more mainstream, it seems like they might. Well, they yeah, it's get like because it, it's like where do we stop? Like, okay, if we if we name Vinnie Paul, what about a guy that released like? An album that didn't do well and passed away. Like, do we have to include him now? Well, they, well, they it's do like include, that kind include, of like, shit. producers and writers and stuff. So, like, mm. that's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that that's. I'm point. assuming you have to be prolific to get on the list. Like, I very guess, prolific. Sure. Probably. They probably had to have a cutoff for sales or something. Her Grammy. <laughs> yeah, one. and it's like we need to realize as consumers or as artists or whatever it is that you do that could possibly feed into what is deemed the Grammy culture that we make it a gold standard so if we choose not to make it a gold standard we could do that as well and you know there's there's all there's 10 billion award shows it seems like between the BT awards MTV awards Grammy this and a third so like Mm -hmm. maybe we should give thought to Kind of coming up to what the new gold standard is if it doesn't fit the parameters of what we think. How many award shows do you think there are between music and uh, move like movies and stuff like that? Probably like fifteen or twenty now. At least, yeah. Yeah. That are popular ones. Yeah, yeah. There's the SAG Awards. There's the uh, CMAs. The CMAs, VMAs, MTV still does award awards, I believe. The Nickelodeon Uh, Kids Choice is like athletes and musicians. There was like a different country music one that wasn't the actual country. I I saw like a different one. I was like, there's more than one. (laughs) It's it's like when you look up, like, for example, like rapper Eminem, it's like, oh, how many Grammys did he win? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, he won some Grammys. Mm -hmm. And over 150 more, it's like, of what? Yeah, for sure. Did you win, like, Target's choice (laughs) of, like, employee voting? Like, who's the best? Or the top selling CD at Target right. that year? Like, And remember back in the... What the fuck are you getting? The 90s, it kind of... 90s and uh, 2000s, it went into, like, early 2000s. Like, the Source Awards. How many mics did your album get? You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't even oh. about how many <laughs> Grammys or this. And, that was, third, and like, then that's when that whole Benzino beef started and the break away from Source as being the gold standard. Right. Because they gave, like... What it what was it that set it off? Was it the Chronic two thousand one? Like they gave two out of five or something, and they're like, "That's it, fuck you guys." Like, yeah, well, that's proof positive that we as consumers or them as artists could yeah. change what the gold standard is. Yeah, well, they because I mean during that point in the early two thousands, that Dre Camp, that that was like the controlling factor, mm-hmm. like the majority of the gold standard. Mm-hmm. Like, they could actually make the moves. But with the Grammys, you would have to get enough of the biggest stars and celebrities to boycott the Grammys. And some do, but then they're like, well, oh, Jay-Z, you might win. Why don't you sit in that front row with Beyonce? Yeah. And then he shows up, Kendrick, why don't you perform? And it's like, Drake, 
Like, you shit on the Grammys. Let's give you one. What? Yep, like, exactly. He shows. Yeah, exactly. Sure. And then Taylor Swift's like, there's, like, why would I leave? Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> and then the new artists can't afford to lose and not be there. Like, if they win, they got to have it. Because that's like, yep. the Grammy's still a Grammy. Right. It's a big fucking deal. Even though, like, you don't think some people should win it, but some people do earn it, and they should be yeah. there for that. But it's like. Sure. What do you mean? Nowadays, shit, half the newer shit, artists shit. get to perform mm-hmm. at it. So then they're going to be there, of course. Yeah, and then, too, it's like, they they equate Stop. that to success. And it's like, not even getting a Grammy, just making it to the Grammys and bringing your mom or, yep. you mm-hmm. know, like, your A1 Day 1s and stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's a spectacle. It's a lot of layers. And I do agree, there's going to be, there has to be a lot of high-profile people that boycott it continuously and... Um, you know, people that kind of follow suit until it'll change over. They do have a good hold on it because if you even have people that boycott it, that doesn't get as much coverage as the Grammy still. So that's overshadowed by this monster we created. Yep. I understand. I, I heard uh, Keith, Keith, uh, Keith Flint and Bushwick Bill you put down yep. on the article. Those are yeah. some, of the, some of the main some ones. Of the, yeah, that's yeah. it sucks. It sucks, but... Speaking of someone who's won Grammys and has snubbed them for quite a while now, years, um, Eminem is the first and only artist to have ten consecutive number one albums. That's pretty cool. That is... It's a feat. Yeah, that's insane mm-hmm. to me. That is ten in a row of number one albums. Mm-hmm. And that's fucking nuts. And he's the first and only. Mm-hmm. So congrats to him. I'm assuming... Music to be murdered by hit number one. Yeah. Because that's why... I, I looked yeah. the other day when I was looking up something else and saw it was still on at one, I think. Mm-hmm. It's fucking phenomenal. So. Did you guys talk about that last week? Yeah. Okay. I said that you didn't like it. Yeah, you could say that I didn't like it. The thing is, and to bring up my point and to quickly cube and rehash what I would have said last week, is what I find important in a hip-hop album is... If it is as controversial as the the material that Eminem covered in the album, I saw more of like I, I sent a meme to the group like I was you know kind of playing um, playing around with Bryce uh, no homo in the uh, <laughs> in the in the chat and I was like yo all edge no point I saw more memes about that album than people actually talking about the content and that's why I was like. Mm-hmm. You know what? The content from that album is so important that if you're going to put out a body of work like that, whether it's Eminem, whether it's a SoundCloud rapper, whatever, I want that music, and this is what I was truly upset about, I want that music to start sparking conversations. If we're going to talk about gun control on an album, I want that to spark conversations about gun control, and all I could see is Eminem versus the world on here, or who could have the funniest memes, and it's like, that upsets me about the album because even if I listen to the album, it's if I'm an Eminem fan or not. It's not what side are we on on these issues and how can we discuss this. It's like, oh yeah, I'm an Eminem fan. So you're a stan and you're an anti-Eminem guy. And that's that's all it ever is. And that kind of pissed me off. So I didn't, I was like, hands off. I don't even want to listen to the album. On, on Reddit, there was there was good discussion on it. On hip hop heads, at least. A couple of threads. Well, they go, they vote them. So if it, you know, goes to the top or whatever, and it's like, sure. you know, it came out. Let's discuss it. And then like, then they do another thread. Music to be murdered by one week later, mm-hmm. and it's like oh. after everybody digested it, why you can sit and think on it a little bit, mm-hmm. and you come back and you're like, you know what? I'm not mad at the features. Mm-hmm. Like we had a shit ton of good features, mm-hmm. and we ha- he had an insane amount of hook and chorus features mm-hmm. that are big. Big names, big shit, dude. Like Don Tolliver, Anderson Pac, uh, even even Ed Sheeran and Sky, Skylar Gray. Even though Ed Sheeran's was completely out of place <laughs> in the song, it's still it's still Ed Sheeran. <laughs> it was. I trashed it last week too, but I mean it's still Ed Sheeran. I like Ed Sheeran, but it was just completely out of place in the song. Skylar Gray's is good, kind of out of place. They should have had Ed Sheeran do like some like T Pain auto tune yeah. or something. Q Tip. <laughs> Uh, Q-Tip did a did a feature, uh, Three Quarter Slaughterhouse, Young M.A., uh, Black Dot, um, Danon, and Royce had two, and 
It was awesome. I, I yeah. mean, yeah. After digesting it for a couple weeks, yeah. I'm still I saw about it. on the Hot 100 when I was looking at I think at least three or four songs from it were on the Hot 100 or whatever. Yeah. So It's a big deal. And then that music video that they had ready, that Darkness music video, I talked about it last week. How the entire song was a fucking bamboozle. And the whole thing was him telling two stories at one time. And the entire thing was a double entendre. And then when you get to the climax, it's like, oh, he's the Las Vegas shooter. Like, that was... That, all right, you fuck, you blew my mind. And I'm like, I've never known anybody who's done that in rap. Like, so, I mean, if you think, if you have examples, give them to me because I'd love to listen to them because the first time I listened to it, I'm like, I'm like, okay, he's doing double entendres, double entendres, but then it's like, it's like, okay, this is cool, this is cool. And then like the climax and he's like, oh, I broke the window, popped the clip in. Skype for sniper vision, and then and then you get the gunshots popping out the window, and he's like, everybody's running and shit, and it's like, oh, he wasn't getting ready for a show, his show. He was the Las Vegas shooter getting ready to shoot up a show. So it was, and then at the end of the music video, the vote.org, and saying that, you know, we can, we can stop this, we have the power to, by voting, and then the vote.org link, and I'm like, that's awesome. Very political. Love it. I love my woke rap. <laughs> and I do wish that the issues come up more than the Eminem circle jerk. It's like, it's like, oh, fuck. This is, oh, this is Baron Kamikaze. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's Baron Revival. Baron Revival. Oh. Yeah. And it's like. <laughs> do not video watchers do, do audio listeners do not watch what I just did there. hundred <laughs> percent correct. <laughs> but um a hundred percent correct. But it usually um, does like anything that Eminem does usually devolves around down to like where does this fit on Eminem's discography? Let's rank his albums again. Like every time. Which is that, fair. You can rank them because a new one has come out. Where are we putting this? That's a discussion to have. But when if, an album like this with a song like Darkness, I agree with you. It should be... The issue should be discussed more than yeah, the album itself. And For the sure. Artist. And it's like, I've seen that shit time and time again. There's a most deaf, black on both sides, verse for anything that is happening today, currently. Yep. And that came out forever ago. And it's like, if we were having those level of discussions when that came out and wasn't stuck up on yo, that was dope how he put that down or these bars were dope. Like, I, I'm I'm ready for woke rap to start motivating people to have these conversations, start being more politically active and not just Twitter fingers and things like that. And you're yeah. going to get it wrong. There's going to be Donald Trump's and there's going to be whoever else in the mix. There's going to be people trying to stop it. Yeah, there's going to be the sure. counter. Can a woke rap song be so good that like the message gets like overshadowed? That often yeah, happens. That's what I was oh, yeah, that's yeah, for that sure. That often happens. For sure. It's kind of what I thought you were going and it's for. It's like you like, like black thought is so crazy, and I, I I I agree. I fall into that, you know, too. But it's like you kind of want it to still be there so you can keep making songs about it. For sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for sure. That's probably the sentiment for you know a, a group of people. But it's just it's hard for me to watch anymore, you know. And it's like I I kind of have to find the right. And I know Facebook is not, and I know social media is not, mm-hmm. but I've also had some really candid conversations as a result of me communicating with people uh, via social media. We just need Yasin Bey. Yeah, we need for sure. back. Like he did that. He did that art exhibit. Yeah, that's cool and all. Like I want to hear that eventually, but he was he's he's a dark knight, dude. Why is there he's not, the hero we deserve? Why is there from when it comes more, to woke rap? It's most deaf for me. <laughs> For sure. Scarface, most deaf, and then of course Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, Seven, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> a lot the of message. people. There's a lot of people in there too. But yeah. I, I wonder why these album releases don't do Color more things Chloe. like um like Killer Mike does, where it's like I think Killer Mike, um T I a few other people Killer on Mike. stage. But they were actually it wasn't a concert. They were talking about issues with the crowd, and it was just that. It wasn't rap. Okay. It wasn't bars. It I would was like people to do that. having a discussion, and I would love to see that. I would like to be a millionaire rapper and do that. Yeah? Yeah. 
or just well this is our platform right us? now yeah so we get to like, do it yeah. no one that? talks back because right. they don't listen do you hear that jay-z <laughs> jay-z i'm looking at you <laughs> when we had that when we had the jay-z <laughs> argument and chris was like what are you doing it's like well this is our platform we are doing something at yeah. least no one's listening but we're right. doing it <laughs> and like, continuously we're yeah we're, we're current with it someday third. someday 100 people are gonna see Catch one up. video <laughs> they gotta get past my racist ones that i did at the Man. beginning to be edgy and then we'll <laughs> then they'll get to edgy. hear and they'd be like, wow, they actually have some really insightful yeah. views that are... I, I wrote down the episodes, and I we need to revisit it. Because I've been... List, I listen to, like, when I run out of shit to listen to, yeah. I listen to the old stuff, and I'm like, I probably shouldn't have said that <laughs> more than once. Hey, man, dude. That's Just the past, man. Joe Rogan's who he is for a reason, man. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I mean I, I'm not... I'm not. I'm. I wouldn't apologize for it or nothing. No, don't. But it's more like in more like in a. We're trying to attract people. Mm-hmm. Should we even? <laughs> the Thor's there. Should we even like? Well, if you should well, work that way. If, like, if it works correctly, you should see an evolution throughout. Buddy, you gotta go upstairs. But, yeah. <laughs> go see my. But at the same time, it's like. Go on. It gets more organic. It gets more genuine. The conversations are more fluid, and that's the way that we've been trying to get at, and that's the way we've been going. I'm I'm 100 sure of that. Oh yeah. Um. Ultimately, it's it's still, you know, we still have our things here and there. Like mm-hmm. today, we do themes where it's like Kobe Bryant. You're wearing yep. some Kobe's. Speaking um, of the Kobe, uh, I think I heard that. Uh, was it uh, Lil Wayne's album had like 24 seconds of silence for Kobe on it or something like that? Wow. I, I knew it released... I think it released like today or yesterday. Today. Yeah. yeah. There I were think... some people that had links up like mm-hmm. a little bit before midnight. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the title of his album and the closeness to the Kobe Bryant oh, thing, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know? I missed it. What's the album title? Funeral. We were talking about Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. We didn't really touch on that last week because Alex didn't really want to talk about it. Because I saw somewhere that he had 24 seconds of silence on his album for, like, Kobe Bryant or something. Yeah. That's pretty quick. Pretty quick well, change I of mean, events. I mean, yeah. I could be wrong, but I heard that. It's, I thought I read that. Somewhere. Hey, that's another, that's another click, dude. That's another another stream. Yeah, and it's Remember like... Remember you talking about those intros? The yep. silence one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, like uh, P- Pootie Tang. Just have it named Kobe and just have it, uh, he added a track. Yo, yeah. this blows my mind, this tribute. And it's, and it's like, just, you know, no, it's just yeah, like Pootie like, Tang, where it's just like. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they're like, mm. like I don't, I don't agree with that. What's the difference between marketing and, marketing an event in pop culture and profiting off of debt? That's the thing that I've been fighting back and forth with mentally, because like, when certain people pass, it's like you want to. Certain people want to purchase things. I'm one of those yep. that remind them of that person. You know, like I had my Kobe Bryant jersey way before this happened. I, I bought the Bape jersey, you know, uh, before this happened as well. But it's like I want a Bape jersey. Would I would I go out and buy some Kobe Bryant's right now See, and wear them shits to remind? I yeah, wasn't, I wasn't full of crap. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that that definitely sounds like a thing that would do because Kobe was part of. <laughs> Oh. pop culture a lot you know and the the shit that he had with uh the commercial he had with kanye west is uh <laughs> circulating again and that shit is funny i almost forgot how funny that was mm-hmm. but um ultimately it's like you you want to have a piece of you you want to make memories tangible and you do that through goods and the people that are outlets for goods are basically like controlling the numbers like the mm-hmm. diamond business so that <laughs> when they yeah. do come back out with Kobe Bryant jerseys they're not going to be for 150 they're going to be for 375 you know what i mean like yeah, i'm yeah. just waiting for that swing of events to come back and yeah oh boy yeah that is that <laughs> holy yeah. moly is that cuz of Kobe's passing or is that just a rare i'm looking up the bait jersey right now and that one is allegedly six hundred dollars, roughly, on StockX currently. Depending on what size you get it in. Yeah, highest bid four eighty. Yeah. So it's expensive. Is this like? But it's not because. 
It doesn't have Kobe's number on it. No, it it was a collaboration between uh, Bape and the NBA, and it was one of those things that were, um, I believe, released. They have a a Portland one. They have an L.A. one. They have a Houston Rockets one, I believe. Mm. uh, Chicago Bulls they have. So it was Mm. just a collab that was limited. And you can still... That's cool. I I want a Bape. I want a Bape jersey now. Pretty dope. Mm-hmm. But I don't it's want really a Bape jersey. Like. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I haven't even pulled the tags off mine yet, you know, and it's like. Well, you shouldn't now. Now you should just sell it's it. Like, holy shit. But. Well, I'll yeah. look at that later. <laughs> <laughs> He's like saved. Yep. But yeah, it's 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 really tough to draw the line between, you know, the the, the 24 seconds of silence. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the beginning of the game, they get a 24 second violation and all that shit. Yeah, the like the how eight much... second backcourt and then the 24 second shot clock violation. Yeah. yeah, and it's like they did that at the Timberwolves game that I yep. was at as well. And how much of that is people being genuine and how much of that is marketing? Like, we're, we're just in the age where we find out the news is bullshit, so we have to question everything. And it's Which you like, should, yeah. Yeah, right. you know, I, I encourage people to do that. I'm not going to say change your change who you are as a consumer if it doesn't feel right to you because obviously you're the judge of that but i just think people should think more what's a marketing ploy for the long the, run there will be there will be the re-releases of kobe's there will be the last ones last designs that he had his hand in or his latest last designs whatever mm-hmm. release and small batch whatever yeah. the sneaker game is gonna the sneaker game is gonna do sneaker game but you should have no you should have no issue with selling or buying any kobe merchandise there's i, I, I mean don't be. feel bad that you're selling your your kobe's now that they jumped up 500 percent value there's well, like when I look my things up, I'm wearing right now. I didn't even think they really went up that much. Well, just well, you got the hot yeah. ones too. Yeah. So yeah, it depends on what like colorways like, like, and fancy, all of this fancy. other stuff. Yeah. But it's like that's it's like that's part of pop culture. Like when you know, not to say dying is like winning a championship, but I bet jersey sales go up mm-hmm. after whoever wins the Super yeah. Bowl. It's just like an event that happens that caused people to buy more stuff. And you have these companies that control the supply of said things in question, and it's a question on whether you want it or not. And it's like, I would love to have another Kobe Bryant jersey right now yeah. that's 100% authentic, not made in some crazy basement somewhere. And it's like, I don't have the outlets to get those things. So the kind of third party market is flourishing off of it right now. So if it's not the main people, it's going to be someone else flourishing off of it. Yeah, and, this, and I know the sports memorabilia stores and collectible stores or whatever as soon as this happens they got to pull all their kobe merch put it in the back yeah that's yeah. Right, yeah and then wait a couple days wait that week start putting the new prices on them and they set them out i've seen it happen before with uh people who've passed away in sports because yeah. i used to frequent a store to play magic cards that was like a sports collectible store yep. as well as like a magic the gathering yep. store mm-hmm. so you know you know the owner and then he just tells you the tricks of the trade like the fake jersey epidemic of the early 2000s or whatever mm-hmm. like and he was dealing with that shit and he was just telling me all about it and he's like yeah it was it was nuts but yeah i mean this is these are these are livelihoods for some people is dealing in the merchandise no. yeah but if you like there should you shouldn't feel bad selling it. It's like, well, I need money or I want money. Mm-hmm. I want five hundred percent increase that will make me want to part with this item. And then the person buying it is like, can, oh my god, I can actually get a piece of Kobe memorabilia. You know, I wouldn't recommend spending five hundred percent markup. Yeah, but if you really want it, it happens. You might as well. You might want to wait for a long time if you want merch mm-hmm. because it's gonna like. Well, it depends. If it goes up in value immediately, wait. But then it, it, the market right now is going to be flooded with Kobe merch. So now might be a good time to buy because it will go down in value, which is kind of a weird way to look at it. But if Or you can wait a little bit until it's flooded and then it'll go down in value. You just have to watch it. But don't spend 500% markups. 
People will price gouge. People won't price gouge. That's that. Yeah. So I gotta say. Mm-hmm. So I gotta say on that. And um, uh, Emilio Estevez Emilio. is to return as Gordon Bombay to the Mighty Ducks Disney Plus series, which is very exciting. Mm-hmm. Other than the fact that that one gentleman, Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg uh, got arrested for meth, oh, like recently. Arm, what is his name? Robert. He was, uh, yeah, he was breaking into a. Place. Was he in heavyweights? Yes. yes, he was in heavyweights. He, he was, was the big candy kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Must be good to see my big ass again. Yeah, yep. Like, <laughs> yep. I think he got in trouble. He's for, not big like, anymore. Yeah, I think he got in trouble oh. for burglary a few years back. Like probably on child drugs star back. gone the wayside. Probably on yeah. drugs back yeah. then too. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of examples of that. Yeah. The child mm-hmm. star going to the wayside. But are you guys um, watching Mighty Ducks Disney Plus series? I don't know. When no. it, whenever it happens, maybe. That's like as a kid. You know, no. it's like oh, I can relate to these kids. Now I'm watching it again. I have to relate to Emilio Estevez. Yeah. And the shit that he was going through, like in the first movie, it's like the your thing- perspective changes. You're like, oh, I want to be part of a great team with a great coach. Mm-hmm. And then you just grow up, you're like, man, it sucks for that coach. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, coach well, got it rough. His girlfriend's leaving him or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. Can't shit. remember it, but. Yeah, and it's like, too, like that almost seems like it, that movie was a Minnesota staple because yep. of where everything took yep. place in the movie and shit. And I'm like, that's actually pretty cool, but I just don't connect to Mighty Ducks like that. I know. I used to. I, I loved the Mighty Ducks. I probably had a t-shirt when I was a kid or oh, a sweatshirt. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what else. Ross, you want to bring up that one? The Bloomhouse? Blumhouse? Oh, yeah. Universal and Bloomhouse are apparently developing a new version of The Thing that will adapt, like, the screenplay, I guess, from the long-lost original novel. Explain The Thing. You ever seen The Thing? Oh, shit. Okay. So, it's a wall... Let's just preface this by saying it is it is the best sci-fi horror movie ever made. Pretty much. Possibly one of the best sci-fi movies it's ever definitely made. the best that used like conventional effects where they're called, where it wasn't like computer yeah. generated and stuff wow. like that. Hmm. It was um it was John Carpenter in his heyday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And John Carpenter, you know, Halloween, they live, mm-hmm. um, the thing. What else? <laughs> Keep going. He's Big Trouble in Little China, right? Yeah, Big yep. Trouble in Little China. Yeah, I saw a lot He's of one of my favorite directors for sure because he was all practical effects and shit mm-hmm. and horror and with sci-fi elements. And the thing is, it is pretty much a masterpiece of cinema. And Do you want like a brief synopsis without yeah. giving too much away? Sure. It's like guys on base in Antarctica... Uh, how do I even like... Okay, they come in contact with like an alien. Mm-hmm. Okay, and horror ensues. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's all the... Well, yeah, I don't want to give anything else. Yeah, I don't want to give away, too much guess, away. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Stuck on a base, it's like, no, we can't go anywhere. Yeah, isolated. Yeah, we have to solve this ourselves with what we have kind of deal. Yeah, okay. And it was just cinematography, awesome. Acting, awesome. Mm-hmm. You got a bunch of actors in there. You got... Uh, Wilford Brimley. Wilford Brimley, Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um... Um, what's that guy's name that plays the the oh, elite in Halo 2? Yeah. Uh, and then they Keith live. Keith David. Keith David, yeah. Right? Keith David. Yeah, he's Windows. He, I think so? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's Childs. He's Childs. Yeah, I think he's Childs. He's Childs. Windows is the, was the other guy. He's the... Windows is the cook? I can't remember. Anyway, it's, it's a good movie. It's nice. Yeah. They made a prequel, like... Back in like 2009, I think, or something, wasn't that shit? Yeah, you saw it in theaters. Yeah, they had the prequel they made in the 2000s. And yeah. it, it, it wasn't bad, but the thing doesn't, it never did. It's considered like a cult classic. Wow. Because it was, I mean, in the 80s, you're overshadowed by everything, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the other sci fi shit coming out, all your Blade Runners, your Star Wars is that you're getting, your Star Treks. Well, yeah, I think your Terminators. I think the thing was one of them ones where it didn't, it didn't do that great when it first came out, and then it became like cult classic type thing. Yeah, yeah. I, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it for sure. Like, yeah, the fact we've I know we've talked it up before on this podcast. Yeah, the and fact John Carpenter. These two guys agree on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Blumhouse, I appreciate a lot for the horror that they do mm-hmm. on a smaller scale, and I. 
I don't think they can fuck it up, but it's possible. We'll see what they do. Um, so this is probably going to be a reboot that maybe will hold more towards the novel. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know what the novel is. It'll have like... I don't know what it was called. Stuff that wasn't in the first one that was in the novel, apparently. Yeah. It's probably... Well, no, the game is a sequel, too. I have the Xbox game for the thing. Mm. I'm sure that has nothing to do with the I watched books. someone play the game. So yeah. I see it. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's the sequel of like the military checking out what happened, essentially. Mm. And then that's a whole new shit show. <laughs> so I don't know if that's in the books, but we'll see what happens here. I'll have to look up what book that's based on. I'll look it up here quick. Uh... But that's, I mean, there's not much going on. Um, let me look up the video, the movies that are coming out this week. Um, it's called Who Goes There is what the novel is. <laughs> not, not <as> well. <laughs> that's the, sh- the thing was better. Science fiction novella. Science fiction novella. Okay. Yep. Okay. By American writer John W. Campbell Jr. Okay. Mm. I want to read that, actually. I want to read that. First published in 1938. Ooh, shit. In astounding Jeez. science fiction. I don't know if that's like a magazine or like Oh, a... shit. Yeah, dude. Um, I have next week off, so I'm going to see a bunch of movies. I still have to see Bad Boys for Life, which I'm going to see. I'm going to see maybe The Turning. Oh, I want to see The Gentleman, what's, which is that uh, Guy Ritchie movie. What's The Turning? It's just a horror movie. Oh. Just a horror, just a horror movie. Just a horror movie. Standard movie. issue. We'll not see Doolittle. The Gentleman? What? I thought that was nope. kind of, eh. I saw Jumanji. I saw I saw Knives Out last uh, weekend. It was good. good. Okay. It was good. I got to see Jojo Rabbit as well. Uh, <laughs> Knives Out just reminded me of the movie Clue. Voice. The old Tim it's kind of Tim what Curry what movie it, Clue. I've mm-hmm. never actually seen the old movie Clue, but it's good. Yeah, it's good. But it's it's just like Clue, mm-hmm. just a murder mystery okay. essentially with a bunch of nice actors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Sweet. But I saw Knives Out and it was like. I was surprised at how much comedy was in there, how many parts you could laugh at. Nice. And every character is, like, just fucking ridiculous, essentially. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. They have, like, the... They have the alt... Like, it's it's like a rich rich person uh, dies and, like, they're, they're trying to figure out why it happened. And then the yep. family wants, like, the inheritance. And they're around and they're all characters. And they got, like, the alt-right kid... That was like, mm, oh my god. god, that fucking... They have Nash Bridges in there. Fucking Nash Bridges. Nash Bridges is in there. Wow. He's the he's dad. No, he's not the dad to the alt-right kid. But it was funny. <laughs> just that... Just that fucking... When they go off on each other, he's like, yeah, that goddamn... That goddamn neo-Nazi kid of yours in the bathroom jerking off the dead deer. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? That is sweet. And he's like, I don't even know what any of that means. <laughs> the dad was. I suggest seeing Knives Out. It's good. Um, Captain America's in it. Um, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of good actors in it, of course. Nash Bridges, for one. Daniel Craig. Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Anna DeArmas. Um... Uh, Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the old guy's name, the actor oh. that plays him. But he's uh, he's fairly popular too. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who played Zod in the in Batman oh. or Superman, excuse me. I know who you're talking. He's about. in there. He's really good too. Oh, okay, I'll find him quick. He's good. It's a it's an all star cast. It's an ensemble cast. All star, quirky. I love it. So Michael Shannon. That's who it is. Michael Shannon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a great actor too. So, yeah, I'm excited to see some movies this week. I have speaking off. Of, speaking of movies, I watched a couple movies for the first time. Mm-hmm. Super late. What are Guardians they? of the Galaxy 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Oh, shit. I fucking laughed so hard. Cause Dude, I, I, I looked, told you they were good. Yeah. So, like, I looked at them for face value, and I'm like, I don't know. And I laughed so hard. Like, They're like the comedy. And, and the comedy you, And then you cried. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. For sure, like it was, it was just too good. And then the second one with Baby Groot in it is super funny, and yeah, yeah it was good. I liked it. Did not disappoint. I was not able to continue watching the boys because I had to cancel my subscription because that shit <laughs> <laughs> it charged immediately. Like as soon as you left, Tamara came downstairs and she's like, "Why the fuck am I getting emails?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> like, it wasn't supposed to charge." It didn't even give you the free month. Nope. Just straight up. What was charged. it? Fifty to fifteen or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what yeah. she said, but it was. So how far did you get on the boys? 
what we left off as. Oh, just two episodes. No, we, we were on. We were. We we finished a third. I was into the. I was gonna start the fourth, but then I was like, I have. We some. watched all three. Yeah. No, you watched one after I left. I left after the second one. So you okay, probably kept yeah, watching. Yes, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because yes, yes. I st- I was gonna do another watch through, but then I stopped because I'm like, oh, the, I want to show the girl that I'm seeing this and yeah. see if she likes it, and then we can watch it together and laugh. For sure. And um. It's good. So I'm waiting to do that again. Yeah, I'm good. I'm watching The Irishman still. I do it in like <laughs> half hour spurts. You almost like, have to. Yeah, because it's like three, three hours long. Hours, it's yeah. it's good so far, but it's like I'm only like halfway into it. Um, I finally watched. Um, fuck, what's that fucking show? That movie called that sci-fi one with uh, I with Poe. Poe Dameron that makes the robots. Poe Dameron that makes robots. Yeah. Was it, it one that I watched? The. It's called Mecca, Mecca something. Mecca, 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 <laughs> Mecca, fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let oh. me look this up. While you're looking that up. What's that Oscar. actor's name? Poe Dameron. What, Oscar Isaac? Oscar Isaac. Okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. While he's doing that, I also got in, back into watching Outlaw Star again, and that shit is as banging as I remembered. Oh, yeah. I, <coughs> ah. good, okay, keep going. One good Chinese movies. cartoons, yeah. Ex Machina. That's, that's, that was the one I thought you were talking yes. about. I've never I've, seen it, though. I finally watched it. Mm-hmm. One long, long fucking episode <laughs> of Black Mirror. Really? So, yeah, and I'm oh. like, I'm like, I'm like, I, I love it. That's I loved it. Good. And the funny thing is, is that the actor in it, the fucking Irish guy with the red hair that plays the dude who gets sh- shot in the new Star Wars, that's the traitor guy or uh-huh. whatever. I know, yeah, I know what you're talking about. He, he's, he is in an episode of Black Mirror. He does oh, an yeah. episode of Black wow. Mirror, and then he's in Ex Machina. And I'm like, this is just, it's just there. It's just a long episode of it, and it was good. That's fucking it was sick. really good. It was, it was, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I slept on that shit, but I'm like, nope, it's there. That's fucking sweet. Oscar Isaac, he's getting up there, dude, for, like, just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oscar Isaac and my guy who plays the fucking Mandalorian, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. They're getting up there. <coughs> They're Sorry getting up there. Epic, One that Alex always mixes them up on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about dropping That's Marky Mark. Fight. Dropping Mark and Mark. I think really? I'm thinking about dropping Did Marky Mark was, for for like for Oscar. He was in like a yeah. Netflix thing, Marky Mark, recently. Oh, what was he? I had, so. See, I haven't seen shit of his. I can't remember in, what it was. But since all, the other guys. All I know is I remember seeing him in like jail or something, and I remember seeing. Uh, no, Daddy's Home too. I remember seeing Post, yeah, Post Malone was in it too, and I was like. What? Yeah, they're in a fucking Netflix movie yeah, together. Yeah, that's what it was. And was Post like, Malone said that it was the greatest experience of his life was doing karaoke with Marky Mark. Okay. Yeah, or something. And I'm like, oh my god, dude. Dumb I'm watching fantastic. this, whatever this yeah, is. Yep. For sure. No, I can't. I can't you do can't? it. Out of spite. Because Post Malone cannot act. I hope he's not in it for very Fucker long. Fucker can't even <laughs> sing. He is good, though. Are they going to auto-tune his fucking probably, his voice in the movie? Funny. When he's in the movie. Yeah, he processes shit. T-Pain did a whole cartoon with auto-tune as his voice. Like, mm. sky's the limit. Like, yeah. he could for sure do it. I suppose. It's... Was good. I miss Mark. I miss Mark Wahlberg acting and shit. Mm-hmm. He's been doing a lot of comedies, but I haven't seen a lot of comedies for that coming out except for Daddy's Home too. Yeah, and I was okay. Are we gonna make that? But Wahlberg I want the other guys pilgrimage together, gents. Oh, Wahlburgers. Yeah. Is there one in the cities? I think there's one in Maple Grove yeah, that's gonna be opening Grove. up. I don't know if it has. Opened Ooh, up that yet, sounds but. good. Yep. Yep. I definitely do. Remember where we used to go there for Chick Fil A, and then we found yep. out they hate gays. Yep. <laughs> I, and then they moved to our town. <laughs> haven't had it because they did. They did one of our boys dirty, and then Superior. they hate the gays. It's like I haven't had Chick Fil A in years now. Like really? it's been so long. You yeah, hold, you holding out? Oh yeah, I got my guy. I gotta stick with my guy. I gotta stick with the guys. I suppose gay guys, gay girls, whatever. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Homosexuals gotta stick with them too. That's the LGBTQs. Funny. Uh, community. There you go. <laughs> I'm just digging myself a hole. You're gonna have to bleep it. <laughs> <Gender theory. laughs> just 
just start naming shit. I almost went like LGBTQ. So Bryce, where do you add the, where, you, where do you add the gender fluid? The, you put it. Q, you, it's in the. It's, the Q, it's, in, it's in the. It's next to the transmission. <laughs> oh wait, we, <laughs> that works. That works. That's fucking. That works. Just about oh my to say, god. I was just about to say we finally did an episode where we didn't have to cut anything. That wasn't even on purpose. Yo, I didn't mean so that. Funny. I didn't mean that. It is so funny though. What is funny? I didn't even know that was gonna happen. I didn't either. I just said it. And I'm like, oh wait, that. Yep. We've officially hit Joe Rogan status. Yes. Damn it. We've hit. Should we just leave oh, it in and see what happens to our views? <laughs> our eight Whatever. views. I mean, What's the worst? I mean, it was a friendly accident. I mean, if yeah. we if we lose eight views. We'll have like we'll man. have zero. We must have been, we must have been huge in the LGBTQ community if we lost eight views. Right? I was like, oh man, we no been no no probably the we'll we'll decide at a later point if that's cut. Um, that was an unintentional uh, Dave Chappelle that I pulled there. Yeah, um, my bad. <laughs> um, hey, I, I voted so they could get married. Right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> just no. dig it, dig it all. Just dig it deeper. Oh uh, man, we'll just see what you have to bleep out of that. <laughs> um, I ran out of shit. I am. I got. I got else. like a week off and jack shit to do essentially for video games. Ah. So I'm gonna play just whatever. Dead Cells, Hollow Knight. I gotta play. Not on the Switch that came out. That's dope. Uh, yeah, I gotta get snippy clips. Snippy for uh, me and the lady friend. Yes. Uh, get the girl I'm seeing. Do you got Astro Bears? No, I'm not getting fucking yeah. Astro Bears. Get fucking Astro Bears. At what point? Never mind. That, that's not a question. That's yeah. Well, even that's matters. Anything. You got anything? Got yes. anything, Ross? We're dragging it on. Yep. Do I get? Oh, we could talk about the random shit that you want to talk about. Yeah, I guess we could. Uh, the world's most profitable hedge fund is now a climate radical. With thirty billion in assets, its money manager pushes portfolio companies to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions and disclose their carbon footprint. If they don't, he sell he says he'll oust their boards and dump their shares. Dang. So he's holding them hostage. That's pretty <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's a GS. Um move. let's just talk about politics now. Politics. Uh, we dug ourselves a deep enough hole oh, where we can shit. die in it with politics. I figured out the 4D chess that they were doing. Because, you know, Bernie needed to be campaigning in, uh, what was it, Iowa? Or is it Idaho? Iowa. Iowa. (laughs) He needed to be in Iowa campaigning because it's one of the most crucial parts of any campaign is Mm -hmm. Iowa. It's the first primary state. Yeah. It's it's fucking huge. Sure. It's fucking massive. Mm -hmm. They push... Because there was no, because when we were talking about it, when they pushed through the articles of impeachment, uh-huh. I'm like, they shot themselves in the foot. There was no reason to ever have fucking done that in the first place. Because yep. you knew the outcome, which happened today. No witnesses, yep. and he will be acquitted so it's more if he sure. hasn't already yet. Because I haven't, I stopped watching it. Yep. Sure. But I'm like, what's the 4D chess? And I'm like, oh yeah, Bernie needed to be in fucking Iowa. Yep. So they pulled him away from campaigning yep. in Iowa to be in the Senate. And then replace, and I'm like, why didn't Booty Judge? And it's funny because they did they did that and failed too, which is funny. Yeah, and why didn't Booty Judge drop out? And it's like because if because if Bernie wasn't there or Biden wasn't there, they had no one to take away the votes from Bernie. Mm-hmm. So insert Booty Judge because he's not going to be there in the set in the Senate. Mm-hmm. So he gets to sit. So he's the guy in Iowa campaigning solely and in his death throes. Would probably be Yang or some shit. Even though Yang's libertarian, I don't know why he's What's funny is Democrat. Yang, Yang said that his supporters are probably going to vote for Bernie in the primary. So a lot of people said an endorsement could be coming if Yang drops out. Yeah, mm. but Booty Judge is not dropping out. So I'm like, oh, he needed to be there to take the votes away from Bernie in the primary mm-hmm. to give Biden the edge, mm-hmm. because the people who are going for Bo- Booty Judge and Biden or Booty Judge and um, <laughs> Bernie are like, you know, similar. F- Facets than a Biden Bernie, you know, like there weren't. Did you kick Thor? Um, But anyway, so they push the articles of impeachment, pull Bernie back, so he misses the most important camp part of the campaign for the primaries. Insert booty judge to take away votes, (laughs) and that's the 4D chess, dude. But it failed though. What? That totally failed though. Have you not seen? 
No. Bernie's been surging even without him. He's had, he's put on like multiple rallies and he has people in his place there doing shit. Okay, that's it might it might not work, but I'm telling you, mm-hmm. this has they to be trying. the only reason they were oh, yeah. trying. Oh, yeah. oh, and I told I keep telling people on Reddit that downvote me. They're like they're like, yeah, Bernie, Bernie. And I know these fucks on Reddit. Mm-hmm. I love you guys. Well no, I iffy. <laughs> um these fucks are gonna be just like twenty sixteen, Bernie or bust. If I don't get Bernie, not voting, voting fucking greenhouse or libertarian like a cunt. And like throwing away votes, and then now they're now they're saying like, oh, we gotta vote Democrat, no matter what, we got it this time. It's we got it, even if Bernie doesn't get, it, we got it. And I'm like, please come to look yourselves in the mirror, Democrats, look yourselves in the mirror and say, I I will vote for Joe Biden. I can't do it. Cause get just get fucking used to it because it will probably happen. It will be Biden Trump in the same 2016 shit. I don't think they're, they're gonna, gonna flush it down the toilet. I don't want it to be. Did I'm he? Bernie all the way, but mm. I'm not gonna throw. I can't risk Trump. He had like yeah. again. He had AOC and like Michael Moore and shit, and then like other people there. Like Mark Ruffalo was there campaigning for him and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo campaigned for him in 2016. The Hulk yeah. couldn't even get him through the primaries. Jeez. Because Hillary couldn't. Because it. Because the DNC is doing this. This shady fucking shit, like with pushing articles of impeachment through, they had the house, the house what do you mean, Bloomberg? during the house. Bloomberg's in- their new champion now. Who? Bloomberg. Biden's not. They're dropping Biden. Well, this, this is something that they're not dropping Biden. There's, Bloomberg. They have until November. Two days before he started running, he gave the DNC three hundred thousand dollars. Then he comes into the race. And all of a sudden, before the next debate, they're saying, oh, you don't need to have the individual donations anymore to be in the debate. So now Bloomberg what? So now Bloomberg gets to be in the debate that he wouldn't have been able to be in. So because he came in the game late. Yeah. He shouldn't be there. Exactly. It's just, an, is it another Bernie clone to just pull votes from no, Bernie he's a, for he's, Biden? He's a billionaire. That's all, like, I'm better than Biden, pretty much is what he's running on. A smarter version of Biden? <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's much. the Mitt Romney of the Democratic <laughs> Party? Jeez. I, th- I, th- I think they gave up on Biden, but we'll see. I can't believe they haven't... I can't believe they haven't pushed Mitt Romney in there. I can't believe it. Just, like, if you think about it, like, <clears throat> who who's going in Trump's stead? They're 100% banking on Trump. Yeah. But it's like... Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe they didn't dump Trump. They they voted against like what was it was fifty one to forty nine or something. Yep. It passed by two. That's because so two what? Fucking s- Democrats. No, uh, all forty nine Democrats. Did? Two of the Republicans that were on the fence decided to say no to like the witnesses. And I'm like, oh, like did they just pay them off or something? That's all. It was just all. the two That's that they needed that were on the fence did at. vote no for witnesses. Yeah. Fuck. Is, so is he acquitted now, or is it just now they go they to... They have to do more sh- stuff, but they were trying... Some people wanted to try to get it done, and other people wanted to try to, like, prolong it for some reason or another. I don't know. They all... It's... They're just... Oh, this the showmanship of these fucking people. Yeah. It's so disgusting. It's like half of you are rich people that could die mm-hmm. and just die. Like, honestly, he's <laughs> fucking dumb. I hate it so he's much. He's not wrong, though. Can you imagine just sitting wrong. here like, oh my god, every aspect of my life is controlled by something I have no power over. Not my votes. Not my nothing. Yep. You get trampled over. It's There's no progress whatsoever. Every The majority of America is like, the solution's simple. Do this. And then the few rich are like, God, to take it into consideration. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. You're <laughs> not going to do it. And then it's like, well, if you were gone, maybe be progress. Like, yeah. shit but, needs to change. And it's, it's going to hit, hit a tipping point at some point. It's the cult of personality, except it's like the person who's like got everybody like fooled is rich and has rich people backing him. Yeah. <laughs> so. And you got, yeah, you got Trump and you got fascists that follow him, racist, cunts, like... That are just uneducated, dumb fucks, and 
they're lost. Like I, I was listening on C-SPAN, the live mm-hmm. stuff, and when they break away, they do calls. Yep. And the only people calling in are the fucking baby boomers sitting at home during work. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm on disability, and I totally think Trump, they should have quit Trump. Because the Democrats here are just putting on a show. They don't need witnesses. They have witnesses. The House have witnesses. Why do they need more witnesses? <laughs> and then the guy's like, like, well, what if they... What if more witnesses come forward? Wouldn't you want more of that information? Yeah, I don't see why you'd want that. And it's like, oh my, how are you alive and allowed to vote? Sure, I'm pretty sure I saw that, like, usually, like, that every other time it's made it to the Senate with an impeachment, there's been witnesses, and this is the first time. 100%. The first time there's never yep. been witnesses and, in an impeachment and, and trial. And most of the time, I heard there, there's more witnesses that they actually have yeah. than they did at the Because it, it's shit... Yet they're trying to play it like that never happens. Yeah, <laughs> it's because because once it got down to the zero hour, people are like, "Oh, I got more to add. Yep. I got the damning evidence. I'm yep. the I'm the witness that seals the case yep. from the one v one personal conversation where I can say I looked Trump in the eye and he said I plan on committing a crime. Well, it's one of the and then that's where, the witness, and then they're maybe, like, "Whoa." Well, I think we heard all we need to hear. I, mean, I maybe, think you made your case. Maybe, we don't need that guy. Maybe the person wasn't very confident about it, so they didn't like say anything during the house trial. He was probably fucking. Scared. And then as soon as the yeah, house trial was... like came as a as impeach, it's like, oh, maybe I should tell them what I saw. I think he said he was scared. Yeah. And then he got the book pushed mm-hmm. out in case anything did happen to him. Yep. He said he waited because he like he needs to get it out. Before they do something to him, essentially. Now it's all... So he was pushing to try to witness. He's sitting there like... There's people that flew, apparently, to the... Wherever they're doing it, the Senate. Mm -hmm. Doing it, like, in town. And they're like, I am here. I am ready. Because the Republicans are like, we can't properly do our jobs. The Democrats are holding us hostage here. We can't properly do our jobs. Mitch over there, McConnell, he's got fucking 500 fucking shits on his desk. How is he going to get through that when we're in the fucking basement of the house <laughs> fucking <laughs> sucking dick and the Democrats are fucking wasting their time and can't do our own goddamn job? The fucking Democrats, goddamn devils. Like and a, then that's what they say. And, like, it, and then the witness... were on his desk before the fucking shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then the witness is knocking on the door. He's like, you guys going to let me in and testify? Or like, I don't think I could get here in time. Like he's got a he's got a flight. Fourteen hours, probably men. They we layovers. They need to pass some bullshit where it's to, phenomenal to make it so they actually have to like go through that pile and actually fucking yeah. you know. Yeah, I got worked up. I, I got worked up. Let me yep. let me make it clear that I'm angry <laughs> and I got worked up. And I also hate Democrats as much as I hate Republicans. So uh, let me let me make that clear. Let me be clear. But I'm, let, let, let me be clear. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm gonna vote for Bernie. <laughs> like, let me be yeah. clear. If I can, I'll vote. If I can't, I'll vote for Warren. I'll vote for Biden. I'll vote for Nah. Probably not Booty Judge. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll I'll do what I have to, man. Like, if the world half of America comes and's like, you know what? Fuck both these parties. Let's just vote Green Party. I don't know if I can do Libertarian. They're like fucked up in don't, the head. Yeah, they are. It's like it's like Yang. Yang's a Libertarian, but somehow he snuck into the fucking Democratic. You gotta learn. Not like party. It's like you gotta what? learn how to put that mask on, bro. Like mask, on. dude. You know, like the Joker movements and the V for Vendettas. Nah, dude. We're putting on Doom. Yeah, and we're putting yes. on Doom. Get and it, we're bro. gonna fucking we're gonna Doom bottom, dude. We're, get mad. we're gonna Doom bottom, yo. <laughs> mad Doom masks. Ho cakes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I I got worked up. That's all I got. Cool. I got my politics out. That's he's got it out. Yep. We'll I will be back next week when he's acquitted. Yep. And then we could talk about it. Oh, boy. It's going to be steaming. steaming next week. Yep. Anybody got anything else today want to say? Closing statements? Nothing? Nope. R.I.P. Kobe. Yep. R.I.P. Kobe. Catch you next time. Yeah. Late. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the episode. You could catch us currently at the Prime 4 Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Podcast Addict for audio only. If you want to see how fugly we look in real life, you can also catch us on YouTube under the Prime 4 Podcast.